Keep it on. Um, when I started to read about the Islamic history, the story of Osama bin Zayd was one of many that drew my attention. This was due to the cause or to the fact that he was only 16 years old when he led an army of 3,000 men to fight the Romans. Personally, I was astonished at first to see that the 16-year-old was even able to fight, yet alone he led an army of 3,000 men. At first, I was astonished and uh, I, I convinced myself that it was an over-exaggerated story. But finally, here today, I understood the concept. It's possible for youth to lead and make a difference. It's possible for the youth to be leaders of today. And my evidence, ladies and gentlemen, are the youth of Egypt, the youth of Libya, the, the youth of Tunisia, the youth of Yemen, and the youth of Syria. They are the change, they are the future. Now a little bit more about me, myself, and who I am. I began volunteering at the age of six years old, collecting funds for, an, for a relief foundation. By the age of 12, I had taken part in disaster management drills, training of trainers, and, the, and I personally became a first aid trainer. So if anything happens today, I'm here. Um, then by the, age, by the age of 13, I had taken part in a mission to Pakistan, where I helped distribute um, relief items to the flood evictees, as we can see on the, on the screen. Now recently, uh, during the summer, I traveled to Kenya where I visited the world's oldest and largest camp or refugee camp in the world, which is the DAP camp. There, I helped distribute aid clothes, clothes and basic relief items to the most vulnerable refugees. So we can see a picture with the Somali kids. Through the, so we distributed aid clothes and relief items to the most vulnerable refugees who had traveled from, the, from, this, from Somalia to the Kenyan borders due to famine and drought. Living with them allowed me to look at the world from a very different perspective. I valued every drop of water I drank. I valued every real I spent because I knew that there would be that one child in Africa dying helplessly from lack of food and the lack of water. Because there are so many things that we, we take for granted and we never thank God for. So personally, after I witnessed their situation, um, that touched my heart personally. Thus, I pledged to take an action. Take an action straight away. On the early morning of Eid al-Fitr, I carried the soccer balls that I had bought from Doha with a couple of friends. I think Ammar is here with us today and, uh, and uh, another colleague called Khalid. And we headed out to the camps. The moment we arrived, joy and happiness filled our hearts as we have as the somali kids saw newcomers they were so excited but the moment when we began the soccer game that was the most amazing part it was a moment that i would never personally forget in my whole life a hysterical, a hysterical moment that would not that would not be described by words but by personal feelings so i hope there's a picture that's going to come up next yes this is me with a somali child and another picture so then the three of us, me, Ammar, and Khalid, decided to do something for these kids. We began an organization entitled Sport for Hope, which the purpose of the organization is to provide the youth of our generation and third world countries the opportunity to experience sportsmanship and athleticism. It could be considered as a psychosocial intervention with humanitarian field and humanitarian aid to change the lives of the needy. Sportful Hope will provide the youth of refugee camps the opportunity to become prosperous athletes in the future. They maybe become one of the leading roles in, or leading athletes in the future. So there's another picture. This is a picture of me playing. So this is another one. And there's another picture that's going to come up. Yeah. So just to comment on that picture, we can see that the whole ground is sand and the goal posts were made of buckets. So as part of, um, this is one thing, as part of my other work during the summer, I traveled to, uh, to, to Turkey. And on, in Turkey, I visited the refugee camps of the Syrian refugees on the Syrian-Turkish borders. I uh, volunteered in packing boxes, which had been put on trucks, and then uh, which had been taken to uh, the refugee camps. So to move on to a different to uh, topic, 
I had always loved politics. After the successful revolutions in Egypt and Tunisia, I had become more I had become more active on the Syrian revolution. I started a Facebook page devoted to that particular cause and became a part of the Syrian activist network. From that moment on, I devoted all my time to become part of the Syrian Rising Generation movement based in the United States and, this, and became part of the Syrian Revolution Media Center, which are in support of the Syrian people's struggle against the regime. Being part of the Revolution's Media Center allowed me to portray my message in a different way, so that a message of the Syrian people through short clips like this, I think will be projected on the screen in a couple of minutes. So this is a picture of me with the leading opposition called Haytham al-Malih. And I think there's supposed to be a, a message. Oh, yes. <laughs> So this uh, one of this is an example of a short clip that uh, I that, uh, I I took part in making, and I can assure you this girl took ten packets of chips to do that. So it wasn't it wasn't that easy. It wasn't that easy. So a lot of people ask me, Abada, after all of this, what's next? What do you think the future would look like? Well, I'm here today to tell you all that. I imagine the future being brighter than ever, full of opportunities full of choices people can make, full of freedom. People are allowed to state what they want from different ways, through media, through speech, through even pictures. I envision Palestine in the future being free, a nation that's free and a nation that becomes one of the leading nations of the future through economic stability, that a nation that we can all look up to in the future. I envision the Arab world united. I envision the Arab world united as one power. So if anything happens, then all of them can eat each other. That's what we are looking for after these revolutions. So after all of this, people still say, you're still dreaming, man. You've got wide imagination, you're dreaming. Well, I'm here to tell you that every single person in this room today can make a difference. If he only stands up today and states what he wants and acts upon it today. Well, I'm not here to say that not just the Arab youth are able to do anything, but I'm here to say that the youth of this generation can make a change and a difference. If only, as I stated, we'll stand up today and from this moment on and now. Because honestly, we are the future and the future is in our hands, the hands of the youth. What I'd also like to say that many people state that youth are incapable of leading leading nations, maybe leading, becoming ambassadors of the United Nations, youth maybe not able to take such big opportunities and so many choices that they can act upon. But let's take a moment and think. The youth of Egypt, the youth of Tunis, the youth of Libya, the youth of Yemen, and the youth of Syria are all our role models. Because, because in the end, they changed nations, they changed regions. And before I, would, before I end my speech, uh, all I would like to say is that every person once again in this room is capable of making a change. And personally, I am not the only person who did everything that I did. The thing that made me do what, I've did, what I did is that I had faith in myself and I urged myself to stand up and say no. I, st I stood up and said that I, want, I personally want to be part of change, I want to be part of the future, and I want to be the person making a difference because every person can make a difference only if he wants to. Now, many people ask me, Abada, in the future, what do you want to become? It's a really hard question. Sometimes a very a question that brings up so many ideas. Some say he, he might become a part of the humanitarian field. Some say he wants to become an ambassador in the United Nations. But in my opinion, the thing that I would do personally is just make change. The change that I had stated, the unity of the Arab world, the freedom of the state of Palestine. And once again, I can simply state that we can unite Sudan from all over again. We can unite the whole Arab world only if we put our hands together and work for it. 
We are the catal catalyst of Tunisia. We are the hope of Egypt. We are the courage of Syria. We are the courage of the Syrian people. We are the determination of Yemen and the determination of the Yemeni people. We are the martyrs of Libya. We are the freedom of Palestine, freedom of the state, of the state of independence, state of Palestine. We are, th we are the unity of the whole Arab world. We are the Arab youth. We are the youth of just this generation. I don't want to take too much time from you guys. I had a short speech. and I didn't want to take it too long or too short. So my message is today is that every person can make a difference only if he can stand up today and state. I am not the only person who does who do these things, but I'm here to try and inspire you because every single person, person from that corner to that corner, from this end to this end, can make a difference. Thank you very much.